So now we're going to see some common oxidizing agent you will use in laboratory. So have a quick revision on what is mean by oxidizing agent. Now first of all, it undergoes reduction. That means it gains electrons or decrease in oxidation number. And the first one we're going to use a lot is the acidified potassium permanganate. So with the chemical equation or half equation, you can see this is MnO4 minus become Mn2 plus. The change is obviously because there is from violet color to the colorless solution. So I think all of you should memorize this. Now the second one is the acidified potassium dichromate solution. Now here is another common oxidizing agent and the color change is really really um, colorful. So the orange color from the dichromate iron will turn into green color which is chromium free iron. Now here shows a video that uh, have a quick look on what is going on when the color change for both solutions. Now on the left hand side is the acidified potassium permanganate and on the right hand side is acidified dichromate. So if after I add some reducing agent, so we can see the left hand side solution turn from violet to colorless and the, left, the right hand side one turn from orange to green. Well, some of you may wonder why every time we need to acidify the solution before we use it. Well, the answer is the acidic medium ensures that the product form is what we want. For example, for the potassium permanganate solution, well, here I showed a video to you to see what will happen if I start the reaction in neutral condition. Okay, so first of all, I add some violet solution. Now this time we do not have any acid inside. Now I add the reducing agent. So you can see the solution do not turn to colorless, but brown in color. Because this time, manganese 2 iron do not form. And the product form is manganese 4 oxide, which is MnO2. Now you are feel free to balance the equation by yourself. Well, the next oxidizing agent I'm going to introduce is the concentrate nitrate acid and the dilute nitrate acid. So make sure that you must understand they have same chemical formula, but different products depends on the concentration. Now, for the concentrate nitrate acid, the half equation is shown here. Okay, so because NO2 nitrogen dioxide is formed directly. So you can see the brown firm, which is NO2, okay, formed inside the tube. But for the dilute nitrate acid, the half equation is shown here. Okay, so you can see the colorless NO nitrogen monoxide will form. Okay, but since there is still some oxygen inside the test tube, so the NO nitrogen monoxide will turn to brown gas gradually. Okay, so in the coming video, I will show more about this. Now, in the video, okay, on the left hand side is the dilute nitrate acid, while on the other side, the right hand side is corn nitrate acid. Now we have put some copper metal in it, okay? Well, in normal condition, copper metal we will not react with acid to form hydrogen. But this time, nitrate acid do not show the acidic properties. Okay, so you can see the colorless bubble formed, okay, on the left hand side. 
and the solution turned to blue gradually because the formation of copper two iron. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, the brown gas formed, but not too much. Okay, inside the tube because there is still oxygen inside the tube. Now we're going to switch on the right hand side. Now this time I add copper metal again, so we can see the reaction is much much faster and brown nitrogen dioxide forms immediately from the solution. So um, in order to have a clear picture on the formation of NO2 from nitrogen monoxide, I try to put the nitrate acid into a plastic bag. Well inside the plastic bag there is less air and less oxygen. Okay, so once again, I put copper metal inside. Well, the next one is concentrate sulfur acid. Now, everyone should pay attention in writing the half equation. Only H2SO4 liquid is accepted. Well, uh, for example, H2SO4 AQ equals solution or only sulfate ion are not accepted in the examinations. And the half equation is shown here. So it is easy for you to understand because SO2 is a colorless gas bubble. So the observable change is obviously. But I think everyone should pay attention to this. The redox reaction undergoes only when there is reducing agent. For example, metal, which is a reducing agent. In case, for example, if we do not have any reducing agent, for example, as we have with base, for example, the corn nitrate acid or sulfur acid react with base or carbonate because there is no reducing agent and there is no point for them to change in oxidation number. So the common acid reaction or acidic properties will be shown, for example, to give salt and water only or give salt, carbon dioxide and water. The well, next one is ion-free ion solution. That means for any solution contains ion-free ion, for example, ion-free nitrate or ion-free chloride have the similar um, reactions. So the reaction is very simple. They will just change to ion to ion and the color change is from yellow brown to pale green. Finally, is another common oxidizing agent, which is the halogen. Now, in the DSE syllabus, we only use two of them. The first one is bromine solution. The second one is chlorine water. Both of them have the elements when we use uh, in the half equation, that is uh, Br2 and Cl2. And their reaction is very similar. It's turned to bromide ion and chloride ion. And everyone should pay attention to the color change. For example, the bromide ion is colorless. So the solution will turn from orange brown to colorless. Well, on the other hand, the chlorine gas, which is yellowish green, will turn to colorless solution again. 